what blew my mind about last time when we talked, um, and you know where I'm going with this, is mm-hmm. the study on the mouse, the five generations. And to kind of illuminate a little bit of it, I'll do my job, which is re-explaining something interesting I heard, but not remembering any of the terms, <laughs> and just okay. like kind of how it made me feel. So that here you go. They took these mice, scientists took a, a group of mice, and they they scared them somehow and played an audio. Aud- audio sound at the same yes. time? Or that is, yeah, that audio is, that is my memory of it, yeah. Okay, and then they bred these mice out five generations and somehow the mice five generations later knew that that sound associated with a fear response. Mm-hmm. And of course they controlled it with mice that weren't scared and were exposed to the same sounds and yep. somehow the memory of being scared of, of a sound Yep. Five yeah, generation. so genetic memory. So when I brought this up to you originally, I was talking about, like, I asked you, like, do you have a phobia? And, of course, you said no. But right. Billy said, right. yeah, like, usually people have, like, oh, I have a phobia of spiders or, or something. Like, sometimes it's really random. Like, you have a phobia of a dark room. Say. Right, okay. Yeah, exactly. No reason to be scared of this dark room. You don't have a memory associated with it. Maybe maybe you've concocted one, but really don't have one. And part of that, the reason why you're scared of it is something called genetic memory. They're just now tapping into this. The potential of this concept is, is is mind-boggling, but you know to test this kind of idea, it, the idea of genetic memory is that whatever your ancestor went through, it can be encoded in your your DNA in in real time, and that can potentially get passed on to your offspring. Um, it's a through epigenetics, and I can get into that later. But um, I mean, and I guess the bad part is I'm setting you right up here in the beginning with something that we don't even know a whole lot about yet. But yeah, just, so yeah, I wanted to bring up just because I can't fathom how. Mm-hmm. You know, a sperm and or an egg. You might as well imagine both of them for it all, yep. for all purposes at this time. But somehow that memory is there. Yep. You know, it's it's in the genetic code. So I, I can I think it's important to get into epigenetics later. But back to the mouse study. So essentially, again, yeah, they expose these mice to a fear uh, situation, and I believe it's like they they showed a color and they shocked them or something like that. Uh, and then they're never, they never expose them again to that color. And then, you know, they have the control group, which only sees the color, but they don't get shocked. And then five generations out. And it's not that it stopped at five generations. They just stopped the study at five generations. <laughs> so they could keep going. So it going. could be like 10 or 15. Yeah, or unlimited. The thing yeah. is, like, as How much do mice thing, cost? Like, can you do this? Why don't you, you do, could this? do this? Just, yes, you could do this in your can own Can I do this? Here. Okay, Yes, great. you totally Perfect. could. Um, right. You could replicate the study pretty easily. But yeah these mice still had that fear response and it was consistent like it wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't even degrading it was consistent throughout so they had the same level of response and you know it makes a lot of sense when you start thinking about like phobias and also i was talking about the shared consciousness concept where for whatever reason a lot of people have the same memories or or will think that they've lived another life or have the same dreams and part of that is they're sharing an experience from an ancestor or at least this is where the, the you know the logical thought process goes, and the, what's, what's crazy some, about this, I'm you could to... have the same genetic memory as your brother, or as your cousin, or as your second cousin, because it, that's how it got passed. So, someone in your genetic line could potentially have that same genetic memory. I can't remember. There's some. I think it's Hitchens or somebody like that that says something along the lines of like, "Yeah, you know, it's like in reincarnation, though. They're always a king or a princess or something. It's never like, yeah, I was a peasant. I remember exactly. that. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, maybe you just don't. You know, <laughs> the thing is, there's a lot to be pick desired the good in this so far. Yeah, you pick, right. pick the good parts, or you know, the thing is, maybe for whatever reason, the, that genetic memory didn't serve you well. So it was something that was bred out in the next generation. So it was actually a deleterious gene, or you know, coding of that gene. And yeah, like Assassin's Creed was like, you had to like just make shoes or something, you know, or whatever yes. kind of yes. peasant job back in the day. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be rough. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I was, I was talking about uh, like piggyback genes when I was talking before too. It's like there's a lot of crap in your genetic code that you don't need it. Like most of it's not read. They have no idea what it does. And some of that could be, a lot of that could be part of it, you know, stuff you're inheriting and could have genetic memory is what I'm trying to say. And That's where it could be hiding because we don't actually, no one said like on a yeah. strain of DNA like, oh, this is the, yeah, exactly. the mouse gets scared when he hears sound color. For yeah, well, we still color. don't understand how memories are formed or like, at least how it's stored. Like We still have not untapped that or tapped into that, like how the brain really works. The brain is the most com- complicated system in the entire universe that we know of.